Hello everyone, welcome to Easy Med. Today our topic is the bioelectric activity that takes place in our body. Yes, it's about the nerves that transmits electric signals from one part of the body to another and hence basically keeps us functioning. So let's get into it and try to make it a little interesting. First of all, what are the cells that are excitable? The excitable cells are those that respond to a particular threshold stimuli by either conducting the electric signals like the nerves or by contracting like the muscles. In this video, let's just stick to the nerves. So what is a membrane potential? As we know, there are various ions distributed outside and inside the cell. The ionic distribution, however, varies in concentration forming a chemical gradient and also vary in the charge distribution forming an electric gradient. This electrochemical gradient creates a difference in potential across the membrane which is known as the membrane potential. For example, the resting membrane potential of a nerve is minus 70 millivolt. The concentration gradient is established by ionic distribution of sodium, potassium and chloride ions mostly. The intracellular fluid is more negative relative to the extracellular fluid that provides negative charge to the resting membrane potential. The membrane potential is not only influenced by the charge and concentration difference but also by the permeability of the membrane to different ions. If the membranes are not permeable or less permeable to certain ions, the permeable ions cannot be equally distributed either. The electric and the chemical gradient oppose one another, so a voltage must be established to prevent the movement of ions along the concentration gradient which is called as the equilibrium potential. At equilibrium potential, there is no net ion movement. At a potential less than this, the ions move along the concentration gradient, whereas at a potential greater than this, the ions move along the electric gradient. The equilibrium potential for different ions can be calculated by Nernst equation which is as follows. Note that it is negative 61 if concentration inside is numerator and concentration outside is the denominator and will be positive 61 for vice versa. The Z stands for the valency of the ions concerned. Upon calculation, for sodium the equilibrium potential is positive 61 millivolt. It is positive because the sodium ions are more in the extracellular fluid than the intracellular fluid and they try to come inside. So in order to prevent this movement, a positive potential needs to be established inside the cell. Similarly for potassium ion, it is negative 94 millivolt and is negative as it tends to move opposite to the sodium ions. As per chloride, the equilibrium potential is minus 70 millivolt. Now, let's come to the resting membrane potential. It is quite self-explanatory. It is basically the potential across the membrane at rest, that is in absence of any stimulus. The resting membrane potential for a medium-sized nerve is minus 70 millivolt, negative sign indicating the negative charge in intracellular fluid relative to the extracellular fluid. For a large-sized nerve and large skeletal muscle, it is minus 90 millivolt. Many ions play a role in establishing this, however, the major one is potassium and others are sodium, then chloride and calcium. There are two main mechanisms for the resting membrane potential to be formed. First and most important is the selective permeability of the ions across the cell membrane. There are many potassium leaky channels which is almost always open unlike the sodium channels that usually remain closed. These leaky channels cause the ion movements along the concentration gradient. So the potassium efflux that is the positive charge efflux is about 50 to 100 times more than sodium influx making potassium the major ion for maintaining the negative resting membrane potential. Nosh equation also supports this. 
This permeability is the major reason rather than the other mechanism of sodium and potassium pump for the maintenance of resting membrane potential. It is supported by goldman hoskin katz equation. The Goldman equation takes many ions into account and depends upon their concentration gradient and permeability and is as follows. Where C is the concentration gradient, P is the permeability and I is inside and O is outside. Next cause for resting membrane potential is sodium potassium pump. It is a primary active transport which uses ATP to transport 3 sodium out and 2 potassium ions in and hence the net result is more sodium and more positive ions in the extracellular fluid and more potassium in the intracellular fluid hence maintaining the concentration gradient as well as the negative resting membrane potential. So guys, we have successfully discussed the basics that is the membrane potential, equilibrium potential and the resting membrane potential in this first part of the video. In next part, we will understand what an action potential is and what are its properties. If you find us useful in any way, make sure to like, share and subscribe to our channel. Also, maybe to grow smarter each day, do follow our Instagram and Facebook page too. Thank you. Hope you all have a wonderful day.